Hello, I'm Joseph Junta, the music director and conductor of the Des Moines Symphony, welcoming you to today's DMSO Listing Room. Today, I'll speak about the music on our next Masterwork concert. The program begins with a piece by English composer Anna Klein. Anna was born in 1980 in London and is currently a resident of the United States. She began her musical studies at the University of Edinburgh and later studied at the Manhattan School of Music. She's previously been a composer in residence with the Chicago Symphony, the Baltimore Symphony, and the Scottish Chamber Orchestra. Her masquerade for orchestra draws inspiration from the original mid-18th century provenance concerts. These concerts are always held in London and still happening today, where people from all walks of life mingle to enjoy a wide variety of music. And you might even see acrobats and exotic street entertainers, dancers, and masqueraders performing if you attend these concerts. The work includes an original theme by Anna, inspired by a massive chorus welcoming the audience, and another theme called the Juice of Barley, a 16th century drinking song. The work is very short, only five minutes long, and has some brilliant orchestration and beautiful sounds for you to enjoy. Next, we perform Jan Sibelius' Symphony No. 7. He was born in 1865 and became a Finnish folk hero. He was known for his remarkable individuality of style combined with his profound sense of Finnish nationalism. He grew up during the time that Finland was fighting for their independence from Russia, and his music brought out the national spirit of the people. Eventually, he became a hero as demonstrated with his picture on a postage stamp as well as on the Finnish 100 mark bill. Schools and roads were named after him and many statues are still standing throughout Finland in his honor. His approach to music made perfect sense. First, Finland was cut off from the mainstream countries during his lifetime. It was like a foreign, isolated island speaking a language all of its own and very difficult for anyone to learn. This isolation inspired him to develop an individual and distinguished style like none other. His music is completely original and not at all inspired by the trends of the time that were happening in Europe during his lifetime. Jazz, rhythmic complexity, neoclassic, impressionism, atonalism, opera, electronic music, none of this inspired him enough to try his hand at it. Sibelius was a romantic at art, and that followed Wagner, and that's exactly how he wrote. His greatest achievement is his seventh and final symphony, written in 1924. His ability to condense material in a way like no other composer was his ultimate gift. This piece, his crown jewel, is the first true one movement symphony, so interwoven and connected that he referred to it as a fantasia symphonia rather than a symphony at its first performance. The work begins with a quiet timpani roll, sort of a gentle reminder that gets our attention immediately. This is followed by a C major or A minor ascending scale. Woodwinds join soon that sound like birds on a cold winter day. And after a beautiful chorale, a trombone enters with a glorious solo with great dignity and majesty. The music then seems to disintegrate right before our eyes, but then the trombone, trombone calls it back to order again. The pace quickens but through metric modulation, where one tempo is strictly related mathematically to another, this returns to the adagio tempo from the beginning. Finally, the orchestra has a massive dissonant crescendo that doesn't easily find its way to C major. Now this C major at the very end of this piece is one of the most depressing C majors you'll ever hear. The great conductor Colin Davis said this was Sibelius closing the coffin lid. Now I believe this piece is timeless. I've always had a feeling of expressive finality 
meaning through its brief 20 minutes, there's a completeness, a fulfillment that many pieces three or four times as long do not possess. Sibelius' Seventh Symphony is a powerful and unified masterpiece. And speaking of masterpieces, we conclude our program with a fantastic artist, Paul Wong, performing Beethoven's Immortal Violin Concerto. This piece was written in 1806 and first performed by Beethoven's colleague Franz Clement on December 23rd of that year. Beethoven only two weeks to write this piece. And although it was only politely received after the first few performances, eventually it became known as one of the great violin concertos of all time. Violinist Paul Wong has received the prestigious Avery Fisher Career Grant and the Lincoln Center Award for Emerging Artists. He is known for his big, lush tone and remarkable intonation. He has performed with the Mervinsky, Detroit, Baltimore, and Lucerne orchestras, amongst others. Paul was born in Taiwan and started taking violin lessons when he was only seven years old. He attended the Juilliard School and now lives in New York City. I am very excited to work with Paul and for everyone to hear him play this magnificent concerto. And you won't want to miss these concerts on Saturday, November 20th at 7.30 p.m. and Sunday, November 21st at 2.30 p.m. in the Civic Center. Thanks so much for watching today and don't forget to click on the link that follows this video if you'd like to hear some of my favorite recordings of the pieces I just spoke about. I look forward to seeing you soon at the symphony.